Hello everybody and welcome to season 4 episode 29 of the KCCFC TV show and this one is quite a special one because we have a special duo and uh, these are the members of the 4th estate, a special representation and they'll be breaking down basically the KCCFC season, that is the 2022-2023 season. On my immediate right is John Emanzi Yamuhaki and on his immediate right is Brian Tuka and um, you, these are not like new faces to you all. And we all know these are journalists and seasonal journalists. A guy is very humbled and pleased to have you on the KCCFC TV show. Thank you, Moses. Mm. Uh, good to be on uh, KCCF TV. Yeah. I hope many look at me as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, always a pleasure uh, mm. getting to talk about sports and uh, in this case, KCCF. Mm. Uh, tough season for you guys, but mm. we are ready to discuss whatever happened. Definitely tough season and we'll dive straight into it. Uh, the objectives of the club at the start of the 2022-2023 season were to win the Uganda Cup, the sometimes Uganda Premier League, and also to qualify for the CAF Champions League. Uh, four years um, since 2019, KCFC has not been able to win any silverware. And this is just another year and next season will be the fifth season. Um, probably where do you think things just do not go right? I was actually John. <laughs> Mm. Uh, well, four seasons without winning, and uh, that comes after a period of uh, KCC dominating Ugandan football. Mm. Uh, I think between 2016 and uh, 2018, mm. KCC were pretty much untouchable mm. uh, in Ugandan football and did some good things on the continent. Uh, so, uh, the season where did it all go wrong? Mm. Because the team was doing well in the first round, uh, but just failed to get over the line mm. uh, when uh, it came to. Uh, the crunch time when uh, the, the stakes were high, mm. KCC just failed to rise to the occasion. Mm. And uh, that's where uh, the title was decided. They had so many chances mm. going into uh, maybe the last uh, 10, uh, was, uh, eight, seven games of the season, mm. uh, where KCC just needed to win to get on top of the table. Mm. And, uh, they simply couldn't. And, uh, whether that comes uh, to the confidence in the squad, mm. uh, because it definitely cannot be about the quality, the players uh, mm. were there. Uh, then, uh, of course, the fact that coaches kept changing uh, throughout the season mm. uh, played a little bit of uh, a part. There was a, a late charge mm. for the title, but uh, it was uh, too little, too late. Mm. Uh, so, I think there are so many inconsistencies in the team, uh, right from uh, the fact that you have one coach, Moldavia, was starting the season, then uh, it goes away. You have another manager taking charge of one game, then another one comes in. Uh, so many things that did not go right in terms of uh, uh, maybe planning for these games, and uh, especially the last part of the season, uh, it was a matter of KCJ trying to, you know, cover ground that they had uh, lost. Uh, I think at the start of the second round, and. Uh, they just couldn't get over the line. Just couldn't get over the line. Brand, do you differ from what he says? He talks about inconsistencies and many other things. What is your opinion? I, first of all, I know you're the one supposed to be asking that, asking those questions, but I want to ask you one. You're closer <laughs> to the club than most of us. Is it, is it just cliche when this club says they want to win a double every season? Because for the last four years they've been mm. saying they want to win a league. I'll be honest and with you. <laughs> is it cliche? Do they actually mean it? They do mean it. I'll, do be, mean I'll it. be honest with you. Well, yeah. if they do mean actually, it... Actually, we do mean it because I'm part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, if they do mean it, then they fail to match yeah. what they mean mm. uh, Why? Uh, over the last four seasons. Because um, I don't think the last couple of seasons Maybe you'd say Vipers, for example, the previous season before mm. this one they won, mm. were the better team, even when Kese finished the first round on top. Mm. I think eventually they showed their quality came out on top. Mm. This season here, I've never felt Kese see giving a title to Vipers like they did this season. Mm. Uh, you finish the first round on top, it's not a given, but Vipers have got continental engagements. Mm. You have to capitalize on it. Mm. They've got games in hand. You win your games, put them under pressure to ensure that when they start playing those games, they know they have a huge gap to cover or catch up on. Cases didn't do that. You will need a game 
playing a relegation, actually already relegated team in Mbuparaka, mm. by two goals to nothing, and mm. you surrender the league. Mm. This is a crucial period of the season where you're supposed to be getting as many points as you can. Then you go to express when Vipers have dropped points, you suffer just to go ahead of both Vipers and Villa, mm. and she can't win against a team that had what, two substitutes on the bench in express. express yeah. Then, second last day, when you have a chance to go top, because cases still, all these are opportunities for them to win a title. Yeah. And they don't forget about what happened earlier in the season. Yeah. But now we're talking about the final bend of the season. Yeah. But they are granting you opportunities. Mm. And KCC couldn't capitalize on these opportunities. Even on the last day, you have Busoka you're playing, you beat them, Vipers have dropped points, you go top. Going into the last day, it's in your hands. Yeah. They don't do that. Now, that says a lot about the players mm. probably at the club. The way management went about the business mm. and everything that happened. Because over the season, I think the man in which the coach left, mm. you can't blame the club for much of that. Because if a coach decides to say I'm leaving, yeah. you can't stop them. The he wasn't sacked. Yeah. He has to be clear, he sacked himself. Mm. But maybe he felt a few things were not going right. Maybe he didn't get enough backing. Because if he left because of the fans, then it's a bit unfortunate on this side. Of course, we all know Molly, fantastic human being, yeah. fantastic footballer when he was playing, mm. good coach, but lacks a bit of personality. And mm. probably that's what drove him out. Mm. He couldn't, he felt he couldn't handle the heat. And that's a bit unfortunate for a guy who had been at KCC for all that long. Yeah. But I think it was important for KCC to manage the transition from Mike Motevi to whoever was going to come. Because it was always going to be difficult mm. to do what Mike did. It didn't matter who you were bringing, whether it was Simba, whether it was uh, all the best coaches we have locally. True. It was also going to be tough because this guy had won a double for KCCA. Mm. He had taken KCCA to group stage in the Confederation and Champs League. Mm. Those were huge achievements for this football club, things they hadn't seen mm. uh, at the club before. Yeah. So it was important that when you decide that he's leaving or you're sucking, whoever you bring, you must be extremely careful. Yeah. Now, whether they were convinced by Mole that he could do the job, I don't know. I was a bit disappointed in the way Mole himself handled and went about the business because I felt, as a guy who had been under Mike, mm. you saw what had brought success at the club. Mm. Maybe he could have handled the team and played differently. Okay. But he felt he wanted to do things his own way. Mm. And he, did, he had to catch up. So, KCC can't dwell on that. We all know what the issues are. I think the recruitment has to be better. They've got to bring in a coach who can manage the project, mm. not just coach. Mm. Because I think that came in as a problem mm. uh, at, at the biggest or at the most important part of the season. So if you can see a fan and management, you're hoping next season you rectify all those gaps mm. and be better. We'll be talking about that and more, the coach's resignation and all that. But uh, we'll try to go back to the start of the season. The season kicks off. KCCFC grind out that result against a very stubborn Waukesha side that had a fantastic first round. I think that was 3-2. And then going on to lose 3-1 to Arua Hill away. Come back home, win against Vipers. Very huge win. Uh, that goal by Rogers Mato. And then losing the game to Maroons 1-0. Missing a, a crucial penalty, that one. That is Chisungu Kankonde. So the first four, about five games, KCCFC having a start and stop season. Because you win one, then you drop one. In. But at the end of the first round, leading by a point, but then going on to lose the title on goal difference at the end of the season. John, I'll start with you. The start and stop, the inconsistencies you talked about in your first submission. I mean, how KCFC started the season? You felt that probably, though there was so much said at that time, I, I'm, I'm quite sure you have been following all that, but what really happened? Because four seasons, I mean, four games in, in, there's a start and stop, you're winning, you're losing, you're winning and you're losing. You lead at the end of the first round. Is it, has it got to do anything with the design commitment by the players? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think KCC were handed so many chances to win the league. Mm. Uh, when you talk about leading at the end of the first round, remember they had lost at uh, Bright Stars in Kavumba, but Viper also lost uh, away from home. So KCC somehow uh, mm. maintained that lead uh, on top of the table. But uh, uh, I think you cannot ignore the changes that happen in this team when you're going to start the season. Mm. Uh, you have uh, some new players that are uh, coming in and everyone is looking at them. You talk about uh, Kamponde, you talk about Shaban, and everyone thinks these are players that uh, are going to run the show uh, for the club. But uh, sometimes it might take long uh, to get used uh, to each other, to get uh, used to playing with uh, each other. At one point, uh, 
uh, cases they went to two strikers, uh, in some games they went to one striker. And uh, all those changes can affect uh, the result and how uh, the games are panned out. But uh, we, we look at uh, a game in Arua, of course they had one in Arua the other season against uh, Arua here. But it's a tough uh, place to go to uh, and uh, against an Arua hillside that is uh, well coached yeah. by uh, Livingston Babazi and uh, has some players that have now been around uh, for a while uh, yeah. that uh, you can call leaders of that team. Uh, so uh, when they come up against a big team like KCC uh, or Vipers or any of these top teams, Villa and Express, uh, those are the games that uh, sell uh, the players and they want to show that uh, they mean business. So it can be a tough uh, place to go for KCC. Uh, I think uh, the most uh, uh, the disappointing one was against Maroons mm. uh, because uh, the chances were there, uh, got a penalty and uh, it was missed. And uh, when Maroons got the opportunity, uh, Amaku uh, really did well against the defenders and uh, found the back of the net to uh, win it for KCC. So it's a team that had, uh, I mean KCC has so many uh, players in front of goal mm. that uh, if we read the lineup and we say Shaban, Kamponde, Joshua, Anga, Brian Ahewa, yeah. you only see him goals, yeah. but uh, uh, the, the goals did not come uh, on the field of play. Uh, and uh, they went in two games and actually struggled to create uh, or uh, put away chances uh, and uh, very often paid the price uh, for that. So there were so many inconsistencies in front of goal mm. and uh, they were not blowing away opponents mm. uh, even when they thought they had the opportunity to. And uh, I think that's pretty much what led to uh, that, that sort of performance in the first round. Mm. Uh, you also have to look at the, the rest of the teams. Mm. Uh, maybe the performance was not really that good. So mm. when KCC beat teams, it was not necessarily because they have come and dominated the team and mm. blown it away. Mm. It was mainly because uh, the other team was did not really have much to offer mm. uh, on the day. Mm. And uh, that's how uh, the first round uh, panned out, went into uh, the second round. When if you finish the first round with one point ahead of uh, the team that is chasing, mm. then you just want to finish the job. Yeah, in because the second you know, round. Uh, in the previous season, KCC uh, had again finished the first round on top, on top, then lost the title by 18 points. Uh, this time round, uh, there's no big gap apart from the goal uh, difference. The goals. And mm. uh, maybe it's just lessons that uh, must be picked mm. uh, from uh, the squad. Uh, maybe the fact that uh, you need to keep a squad together. Mm. Uh, because uh, if you have Ali Melus in goal to start the season, then you have Benjamin Chan coming in, then you have Derek Chan mm. uh, coming in. Uh, if uh, the center backs and uh, you don't have a consistent pairing, uh, at one point you have. Uh, but it was the end of the season, Magambo had uh, come into uh, the picture. We have Oben Chan, we have mm. Guman, and he plays in the center back and goes into the middle uh, some of the times. I think there is uh, uh, there will be a need, uh, of course, to have uh, uh, a squad that you rely on mm. and uh, knowing uh, which players are playing with. There are many players that were inconsistent mm. uh, for KCC throughout the season. I think apart from uh, Rogers Mato, uh, when you look at the, the rest of the players, uh, they were so uh, inconsistent. They are, you don't have many that gave you uh, maybe five games playing at the same level. Mm. And uh, it's always going to be tough uh, when you're fighting for the title and you have players that are not uh, as consistent uh, and it showed uh, towards uh, the end of the season as well. Mm. When you are fighting, you, you just need one goal mm. to win against uh, Usoga United and uh, you're top of the table. And, uh, the goal just can't come, yeah. regardless of uh, the names that we mentioned uh, that are in that squad that you think uh, they are seasoned campaigners and should be scoring the goals uh, for the club. They just didn't get the goals and uh, maybe uh, we'll eventually get to the players and talk about them having to do much better than they did. Having to do much better than they did, we'll be talking all that and more after this break.
All right, welcome back from the break. We still have John Emazi Jamhaki and Brian Tuka, and it's the season's review that is for KCCFC 2022-2023. And we have the members of the fourth estate still here with us and breaking down what didn't go right for KCCFC, that is for last season. Brian, and this is to you, um, the Chan tournament being in the middle of the season that was early in the year. Uh, a couple of KCCFC players going for that one. We had um, Moses Waiswa, uh, Geoffrey Waswa, Rogers Bato making the trip uh, that is to Algeria for the Chan tournament. Um, there's, there's a school of thought, and I've heard very many people saying that, that the Chan tournament being in the middle of the season could have been the push for some of the teams trying to do well in the first round. KCFC being one of those, uh, definitely leading at the top at the end of the season, I mean at the end of the first round, and also teams like Wakiso Giants and all those that had a very uh, first round. Do you think that this could have been the push <laughs> for some of these players, and then probably in the second round they do dropped it because they were not fighting for anything. You can't, get put, you can't put it past a typical Ugandan footballer because what drives most of our footballers, for example, if you ask yourself, mm. it's uh, the money mm. to play for cranes mm. and later on mm. be seen by a football club out of Uganda mm. and go join them and then mm. make, of course, a bit more money. Mm. So I, I can't blame anybody and I can understand whoever, because mm. Sounds more like a conspiracy theory. Mm. This is, no, no one can prove that. Yeah, yeah, actually, okay. they do. But again, we know our players. As a motivation, maybe. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They're always yeah. motivated yeah. by the cranes. Yeah. So yeah. it can't surprise many that yeah. that happened. Secondly, the big games. Remember, Mike was always critical of most of these players who would come up and say, Ninzegua Vipers, mm. Ninzegua Vip. You wouldn't play them. But that's not. That's, that's not that's not how you win a league. True. You win a league by winning all the games. You yeah. can't win a league by winning one game. against the top teams. You have to play every game. True. It's a problem. So if that is said, and it's possible that even among the cases of players would have had that attitude, then you must be extremely careful the next time you're doing any recruitment. True. And I think for me, a big club as big as Casey C football mm. club, mm. you must be careful on the character and personality of the players. Mm. If you want to bring in a player, who will choose the games to play, mm. then that player is not meant for KCCA. Mm. A good player must put in a shift playing against Manus and put in a shift when they're playing against Vipers. There mm. shouldn't be nothing like, you know what, Manus, I can get away with a few average performances. Mm. I think it's wrong and that's something that's got to be uh, addressed. Mm. But also, a couple of things that I must talk about, but most importantly for me is, uh, when you are a coach of KCCA Football Club, mm. There's a way you are expected to coach your team, yeah. or the sort of um, what can I call it? The style, but also the charisma when you're on the pitch. Yeah. Many a times, I think the reason why this is strong because they look for all sorts of reasons, including the break, players being inspired by Chan. Uh, the Chan. Mm. But how many times did people watch KCC and they felt KCC in charge of this football game? Mm. KCC have created chances. Yeah. I've had so much criticism from Kondi. I, I always had more of to talk about how the team has not uh, batted chances. I never saw the chances. I was a good number of games. Yeah. I barely saw the chances. A KCC team should create at least five clear cut chances. Mm. And I said five clear cut minus the half chances. Okay. So probably create five clear cut and an extra five half chances. Half chances yeah. So you must have at least ten chances in the game. Then there you can say we're wasteful. But if you're creating one or two, there's no, even Ali Haaland at times misses chances, is the best striker yeah. in the world, the world the yeah. moment now. Yeah. Messi and Ronaldo too, <laughs> they don't bury every opportunity. True. The reason why they score was because they are getting more opportunities. Yeah. But if you are KCCB and you're creating two, at most three chances, and you want to criticize the forward, no. the striker, or player because they haven't bury, it's not a match for them to bury that. Yeah. Yes, I can understand when you say we don't create much, so you must bury those people. But that's not KCCA. Yeah. They have to be better. And I felt they fell short on that. And that's one of the things I felt I was disappointed in Molly because you under Mike, you saw how you were playing. You created so many chances. That place, Lugogo, used to be feared by everyone. Everyone who came to Lugogo knew what to expect. It got to a point where I remember the season, actually, all these problems you talk about the start of the season when they won two and lost two. Yeah. But the season before, it was the same case. Cases were not convincing that, and you always felt. Playing like this, mm. if you go out to pick tricky sides, mm. you won't pick anything. True. It will be tough for you to pick anything. Mm. I remember there's a game the season before last season. Okay. Not this concluded one. The mm. season before the 2021-2022. Yes. Yeah. 
Bright Stars came and I spoke to one of the Tekenko people at Bright Stars. And after the game, and they said, truth is, we came, we knew we could be easily battered by KCC. Mm -hmm. But at halftime, when we realized actually that we're in the game and they're not as threatening mm -hmm. as we thought, mm -hmm. we had to tweak the tactics. And they came at KCCA. Yeah. Yeah. Bright Stars won that game. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can't allow teams like Bright Stars come to KCC and think that way. They must be, you must impose yourself on the game. And I think that's one thing. Yes, they did so well under Mike, and that mm. is something that's got to come back, whoever the coach is. Because mm. you do that to win your games. Because imagine losing a game mm. by goal difference. Mm. But in the period towards the end, you lost the two nearly, but also teams that should have battered by three or four goals, mm. you didn't. Yeah. And most importantly, by the way, KCC were conceding so many chances and considered a good number of goals. Yeah. Something clearly has to be put right. Wow, um, something really has to be put right, uh, John, and uh, we will be just crossing to the accumulation of games in March. Um, very tricky month, month for KCCFC, that one. They only played one game, and that was in the Uganda Cup. In the, uh, that was the round of 16 against Tambara City. Um, in, initially, they should have played a game against Chetumi, but remember Chetumi had been removed from the league. And there was that game against Vipers that was postponed to May. So that meant the team only played one game in March, and that was in the Uganda Cup. You feel the rhythm of the team was affected there, or that's just probably another excuse? No, uh, I don't really think so. Mm. Uh, because uh, even when they played back to back games, mm. uh, to be honest, uh, KCC uh, were not convincing. Mm. Like uh, Brian put it, uh, they were never convincing. So I, I don't think I would look at that and say, uh, that uh, it was a big reason. It, it helps when you play uh, more often uh, and you have uh, all players locked in and uh, no one switching off, knowing that uh, maybe we don't have uh, that many games this month. But uh, I cannot look at that as uh, an excuse. Uh, I think we've, uh, we watched KCC games and uh, apart from the win over Villa uh, at Lugogo, I don't remember any game where uh, people have left uh, saying that uh, this was a good performance. Mm. Even games that uh, they won, mm. uh, people left uh, with uh, not convinced at all. Mm. Uh, they were not convinced at all. And uh, if uh, either it was Mole's tactics not working or the players failing to interpret them, mm. uh, he talked a big game. Uh, every after a game, you talk about chances that have been missed. You talk about uh, things where they can improve, we talk about uh, players not uh, putting away chances and uh, creating pressure, uh, putting a lot of pressure uh, on the team uh, and uh, all that. Right? So it's, it's just very hard to go beyond coaching. Mm, uh, mm. It's very hard to go away from the coaching problem okay. uh, that uh, was at the club because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, all the players are there and uh, it's a matter of uh, them being able to take the tactics from the manager and uh, interpreting them well. And uh, we just didn't see that uh, throughout the season mm. uh, when uh, Mori was in charge, uh, when uh, uh, the game against URA that uh, Coach KP took charge of, mm. and uh, when Mayanja came in, or even when Mayanja was suspended and Charles Nyanja was in charge, uh, still uh, the team was just simply not convincing. I think you could. The game against Vipers at Chitend as well mm. is one of those where I thought KCC played well yeah. and uh, was slightly better than Vipers but just didn't score uh, the goal. Vipers got the goal in the end and uh, were able to win the, the game. And uh, it's that uh, for me, uh, the quality in the squad, uh, the players taking responsibility and saying this is a big game and I put up my hand to be counted. You saw what Milton Carries I did. Mm. Uh, the game is there for the taking. KCC are not uh, scoring the goals. He gets the opportunity one, and it's enough to win the game. What mm. Mato did against Vipers in the, in in the first round, round. Yeah. one goal that is going to uh, change everything, can change the picture of the entire season. The whole season, yes. And uh, I thought even the players failed to stand up uh, to say maybe this game is there for the taking. Let me rise to the occasion mm. and. Uh, uh, take it and win it for the club. Mm. And, uh, but majorly, majorly for me, I think it's a coaching problem. Uh, from the start of the season, uh, you cannot play the same way, but in a, a in a terrible manner. Mm. Uh, because uh, with all the players, uh, I think uh, especially people talk about uh, the midfield uh, 
uh, problem. The person that sits in front of, uh, uh, the, bar, uh, of, the, of the, defenders the defenders that is going to initiate uh, the attack and all that. Yeah. So there are so many questions. When Mugume played there, he looked like he could uh, distribute mm. the ball uh, quite mm. well. Later on, lost his form in the season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, you had uh, Guma sometimes, uh, Saidi uh, Mayanja. Yeah, mm. when, when uh, Iguma is playing there, the pace of the team uh, is a bit slow. You mm. do not see the urgency going forward. Okay. Uh, he gives you safety in front of the defenders, but uh, going forward, I don't think he really uh, gave the team uh, mm. that much. Then uh, later in the season, Saidi Mayanja came in. So uh, there are so many things uh, that uh, at the end go, go back to the coach mm. and uh, the problem that. Uh, uh, the club had uh, in terms of coaching. But, but also, but, but listen, you, when you're a football team, okay. you not only do things that are within your powers. Okay. If you can't play games in a month or mm. play one game in a month, mm. you have to find a way of dealing with it. Definitely, they were friendly split. They were friendly split. But in the, the, cause, cause they, they come, especially in our setup, because there are a couple of things. Yes. Vipers too will tell you that we had engagements and had games in hand but managed to come back and, and win. So yeah. As a football club and as big as KCC, mm -hmm. there always has to be a plan mm -hmm. for whatever comes up. Because even across the world, the biggest leagues, there's complaints about playing too many games. Yeah. But teams find a way. So if you, if you play one in a month, another time could be complaining about too many. Yes, 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 yes. As KCC, you have to find a way. You have to find a way. And uh, we close up this segment with um, the exit from the Uganda Cup. Second season on the bounce, KCFC losing to Bright Stars. This time at the round, the quarterfinals. The game happening at, uh, in Kavumba. And um, KCFC going on to miss a penalty in that one. That should have drawn the tie level and probably pushed it to penalties. Kankonde Chisungu again, the culprit in this one. But um, so much happened after that game, <laughs> which we'll be talking about later on. But the exit from Uganda Cup still big, uh, at, at the expense of Bright Stars, Brian. You know, uh, Bright Stars has always given case. There's, there's always that one team that becomes a bogey side for the football team. And it's understandable that I think it happens across the world. There will always be that one team that gives you trouble. But for me, the disappointing bit about it is that Bright Stars don't sometimes win beat cases because they've been dominant, because they've outplayed them. It's because they've defended well. And because over the last couple of years, KCC have not been that fluid going forward. Mm. Bright Stars have found it easy to cause them problems. Mm. In that game, you ask yourself, how many chances did KCC have? Mm. Well, they had a penalty. And for me, I thought it was lack of leadership. Mm. I mean, you have a captain on the pitch. <coughs> if someone who's holding the ball is not the one supposed to take the penalty, you have to walk to him and tell him. You can't. I saw it in Chitane. Milton Carissa went to what happened and got the ball from him and handed it over to Anukani Bright. Mm. We are the captain of the day. Yeah. So why on earth isn't the captain walking to the campaign and tell him, you are not the one supposed to take the penalty? Brian, the captain was in goal. Maybe the yes, assistant. Yes, he can. He can yeah. still do yeah. okay. Whatever it is, they must be leaders. Yeah, they must be leaders. You're right. Oh, okay. I saw the coaches shouting, but yeah. the lack leadership. of leadership. The leadership, uh, I mean, the lack of leadership. Mm. Uh, clearly manifested mm. and uh, even as the season went on mm. because uh, you talk about the league game against Vipers mm. and all the uh, the trouble that came from that game and uh, the players getting suspension, uh, suspensions compounded uh, in this case. I think one thing that KCC had been known for uh, in the past is that you're not going to find players in uh, that sort of case yeah. uh, that uh, you're fighting with the ref or pushing uh, the opponent yeah. and uh, sometimes it actually annoys the KCC fans are like these players are not really fighting enough yeah. but I think it's something that Mike Matebi had uh, put into the players that leave the fighting to me yeah. uh, leave everything uh, to the administration to your, and the management yes. play yeah. football yeah. and that's it yeah. uh, so it goes back to leadership when you have a penalty and the person supposed to take it is not the one that has uh, actually taken it and mm. in the end mm. goes on to miss it. Uh, so uh, it shows a gap and mm. uh, of course usually uh, that tells you how uh, well managed the team is. Uh, it goes, it all goes, I cannot imagine a player taking a penalty they are not supposed to take yeah. uh, under a serious manager. Uh, they are, well, they they don't don't it, it, yes, it, it, it happened under Mike too uh, when yeah. uh, Saddam took it but he was very clear when he came in when he came out uh, in the press conference and made it clear this cannot happen, mm. we have a designated penalty taker. But beyond, besides the penalty, I thought Casey did the 
important decision. And this is a, a knockout tournament. So you give a chance one sniff, but a bright stars got a goal. KCCA, Wapua, they were not creating a lot of chances. What bright stars knew the moment we get our goal, have numbers behind the ball, they can't touch us. And that's what exactly happened. So the issue even in there was, and this was a big opportunity for them again to go all the way. Yeah. And to have an opportunity to win a trophy. But the issue was always, you don't create enough chances, you're always going to find it difficult to beat smart teams or a bit tricky teams to beat like Bright Stars. Okay. Yeah, and my also, uh, the fact that when Brian talks about uh, the fluidity going forward, the moment you're a big team and you're not in control of the game, mm. then the smaller team is always going to be a, a tough nut to grab for you. Because that's how they train. Mm. When they're going to face Vipers, when they're going to face the bigger teams, mm. there's a plan, first of all, to stop the other team from playing and then uh, maybe hope that you get a chance and uh, run at them. So the moment cases here get into the game and they are not as dominant as uh, people are used to, then you're playing the game, uh, the bright stars game, and they are going to beat you at it. Mm. And uh, I think that's what happened in most of the games, that you go to a team that you believe should be second best to cases here, mm. and they are just marching uh, at the same level, they are playing at the same level, and uh, in the end the smaller team uh, takes the day. So, KCC have got to get back to dominating games, mm. having a lot of possession. You deny the opposition possession, yeah. uh, and uh, that's how they make mistakes, that's how we score goals. But mm. the moment the possession is shared, then uh, I think in most cases the teams are going to be uh, more solid uh, in terms of uh, organization at the back and uh, very hard to break down. And now for you, once you get the opportunity, you're going to get one or two chances. And then you'll end up saying we did not put them away. But KCC should be a team that uh, dominates possession and in the end creates a lot of chances. Then if you score two or three goals, good enough for you to win the game. But you cannot rely on one chance mm. that has been missed to say that maybe that's the reason we lost the game. Very painful exit from the Uganda Cup that and uh, like I said, the second season on the bounce, KCFC getting out of the Uganda Cup at the expense of Bright Stars. We still have the members of the fourth estate on the show and we'll be discussing the resignation of the former manager and then the incoming of Jackson Mayanja and also the final bend of the season. And what next for KCFC ahead of the new season? All this after the break. Right, welcome back from that break. We still have the members of the fourth estate, John and Brian. And uh, straight in this one, the resignation of manager Molly Bekwaso after that Uganda Cup game. <laughs> the circumstances in which it happened, that was in Kavumba. And then the income, incoming of Jackson Miamia Mayanja, the legend of the club. Uh, eight games, he won three, uh, drew two, and lost one. And then uh, Senyangi Charles Kadidi had a stint there when he was suspended a draw and a, and a win that was against Bull. The resignation of the manager mid-season with eight games to go, not even mid, towards the end of the season, eight games to go. This affected the team or probably did this lift the team's spirits? Uh, well, uh, it's, always, it's not good when a manager resigns. I think it uh, says a lot. We, in modern times, mm. the managers no longer resign. They're fired. They're going to be fired and uh, yeah. They walk away with the kitty, yeah. uh, but uh, whether it is the love for the club that the man thought he could not uh, contribute anymore and uh, wanted someone else to come in, uh, is a story for another day. Yeah. But uh, it was not uh, something good, uh, but he left on his terms. Yeah. Uh, felt maybe the players were not giving enough, he th thought he would not uh, motivate them enough to uh, go further. Uh, I agree with him. Yeah. I thought. Uh, uh, he had struggled to really stamp his authority on that team and uh, uh, it's unfortunate for him that he had to live that way. I'm sure he would have wanted to go and uh, win the title with the, with the team but uh, that was not the case. So it's, always, it's, not, it's never good. And uh, incoming of uh, Jackson Mayanja, I like the vibe at the start. Yeah. Uh, the energy with which uh, he came, mm. the authority with which uh, he spoke. Uh, sometimes that's what players need to hear 
from a manager. Uh, for, uh, they need a voice that is uh, assuring and telling them that you can actually go out there and win uh, games and yeah. you can win the title. Yeah. And uh, indeed, in the end, they lost the title on goal difference. Mm. Uh, so you uh, you cannot say that he did not do well mm. as Jackson Mayanja. I mean, there are things he said that were unnecessary uh, uh, in uh, the whole in his uh, short stint. Uh, some things that he said that maybe he, that were never they were better off not saying. Mm. Uh, but uh, in terms of motivating the players and uh, you know getting them out of that shell, because when if you watch the game against Costa Villa, you saw a team that players that looked like they were liberated. Uh, Alan Okero, Moses Waiswa. I thought the entire team played well, mm. and uh, obviously ran out of games. The games uh, got done before uh, they could uh, really go to the table, and uh, in the end, Vipers won the title. But it was. Uh, a late push uh, that uh, still had inconsistencies, but uh, I think you could see uh, when the manager came in, mm. he was a voice of authority, uh, tried to uh, talk to the player. I remember how he hooked, I think it was Geoffrey Wasso in that uh, game against Villa, yeah, yeah. after uh, one mistake took him off. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, there are decisions that he made, substitutions, uh, how he managed the game against uh, Ondo Paraka, mm. I know that can't be questioned, but mm. uh, it was a short spell. Uh, and uh, for me, I just yeah, if I'm to pick out the positive, mm. I think the confidence that he looked like he had given some of these players, mm. uh, although in the end he fell short. But uh, we cannot overlook the fact that it was close, yeah, just lost uh, by points difference. Mm. And uh, you have to give him credit for that because he did not have a lot of time in the team. Not a lot of time. Brian, you attended the first press conference uh, for Jackson Miamia manager at Lugogo, I remember. You felt he was the right man for the job at the time. And also, the resignation of the manager and the transition for those last eight games by uh, Jackson Mia Mia Mayanja. First of all, I really hope that whatever Mori goes or this period that is not in any job, he uses it for self-reflection and um, as a as a nice human being, mm. as, a, as a good guy, mm. probably works and improves on his character and personality because in my entire life of covering sport, I've never heard of a coach say the things he said after his Mm. that the players are not listening to me. I've never heard it anyway. Mm. Yes, coaches can say, I don't think the players are the fight in there, I don't think they were doing it, but for a coach to wake up and say, why are you playing players who are not listening to you? That squad is big, you can't tell me the entire squad wasn't listening to you. Mm. So that said a bit about his character and personality, and I hope it's something he proves on. Anywhere he goes, you must have a strong character as a coach. The club, I think, did have so many options. Yeah. Look around the people they could have brought. There was only one available, readily available, actually two readily available. Mm. Jackson Mahanja and probably Mike Mutin. And maybe, given the nature of how Mike wants to do his work, mm. he didn't want to come in at that period, within a short time, when he can work on a project. Mm. So, it was a no-brainer to bring a former player, the greatest player of all time mm. uh, for the club, but also the greatest uh, in this country. Mm. But also, in terms of character and personality, when he speaks, mm. you want to listen. Now, does the character and the personality of Jackson Mahanja match his coaching ability. Yeah. There will be so many questions about that. Not sure. But given what was left, I think he just did enough. Mm. But the, even himself, he knows he could have done better. The desire and the commitment of the players. Uh, very many people have said that, yes, the on paper, that squad was top class. Any day, if you mentioned or if you just named any random 11, they could be able to win you a game. But the desire and the commitment of the players as we wind this up. And also, what next for KCCFC? Now that we've talked everything, um, Jackson Mia Mia manager's contract ends at the end of this month. That's a decision yet to be made by the board of the club and the management, whether he stays or whether another coach is brought in. Is it time to also maybe go foreign or uh, get a local coach? And there's also that school of thought that there is no person that has won a league title for KCCFC and they have not been a former player. So the desire and the commitment of the players and also what next for KCFC? Uh, the desire and the commitment of the players, mm. uh, I mean, these are supposed to be professionals. Mm. Uh, they are, you, you earn a salary and uh, I, I don't think you've had problems with KCFC not paying players. Mm. So that is the first, of, uh, first and foremost, that is the first thing that has to be in the player's mind, that you're paid to do this job. Mm. If tomorrow you're not playing at KCFC, you will not be paid mm. uh, for that. So that should be the first uh, motivation. Then, uh, of course, looking further, mm -hmm. if you want to play for the national team, you want to get, go further than just KCC. So, uh, do we question whether the players were, motivated, were 
really motivated and uh, doing enough, uh, showing desire uh, to win games. Uh, I don't think I, I can go back to that. Uh, again, I, I will go back to the voice of the coach that uh, there is no player that is going to be on the field of play and not give his all, yet stay on the field of play. Yeah. So uh, at, the, at the end, the back stops with the coach, he's going to call them out and uh, if you're not committed, uh, Casey has a very big squad that uh, uh, will uh, players that they can look at uh, to come in and uh, help. So I don't think we can look at that uh, and say maybe the players lacked uh, desire and uh, fight. Uh, that would still go back to the management and how uh, the instructions are given and what, uh, how the coach uh, holds them uh, accountable uh, at the end of uh, every game. But if uh, a striker is on the field of play and has not scored in five games and you still name him after uh, in the sixth or seventh game, then uh, it shows that you have belief in him. You trust. <laughs> and uh, you trust yeah. him. So mm. it all goes back to the coach, but uh, the players, of course, have got to lift themselves. Mm. What next for the club? What next uh, is uh, to find a permanent manager that has to uh, get some time mm. uh, with the team and uh, it has to be the right manager. Mm. Because I think uh, the last two seasons, uh, uh, we, uh, if you look at the, uh, the results, it shows that the manager was not good enough for KCC to go on and uh, win uh, either the league or, uh, or the cup, or the Uganda Cup, and mm. it's now four years without uh, a title. Mm. So it has to be what do KCC want? Do they want immediate success or are they going to work uh, on a project? Because a project can uh, produce results in the first year when it is actually projected to uh, get results in three years. Yeah. Uh, so I think it uh, will be very important what sort of uh, direction KCC want to get. Uh, are they going to get the money? Because now, now you can't get worried that uh, maybe they want to win straight away and they might go and look for a a coach that is going to come and win straight away. Mm. But that has not worked like, in the last four years. Maybe they might want to look at uh, building a serious project under uh, a tried and tested manager, mm. uh, maybe. Who? If you are going to go... I foreign can't... or local? Well, if you are going to go foreign, it has to be uh, it's the unestablished coach. Yeah. Uh, do not go to Mexico, mm -hmm. Portugal, and mm -hmm. pick up whoever yeah. uh, has uh, put in his CV as a football coach. It has got to be uh, a coach that has a track record that, that can really be seen and uh, maybe has experience on the continent and uh, knows one of the things about uh, African uh, players and uh, all that. So it's, it's a very tough decision for mm. KCCA. Mm. Uh, what kind of manager they are going to look at. There are not many candidates mm. uh, in Uganda when you look around that are going to come and fit into the KCCA uh, system and how they want to do things. So okay. maybe it's about time they try out a uh, foreign <laughs> Foreign. Brian, uh, design commitment of the players. Does the club go local or foreign? Well, no, I, I think they, you can't fold the players that much. I thought at times the coaches could have helped with the design. Mm. Sometimes coaches drive. Players across the world are like kids. Mm. They, are, they need a drive from someone. I don't think it was in there from the touchline. Mm. That's one. Uh, could they have probably done better self-drive? I think it can be better than what they showed last season. So they've got to work on that. Uh, and I think that's why KCC, when you bring in players, you must consider that big time. The mentality, character, the fight in the player to come and play for such a football club. The coaches, for me, I think they need to get a coach who's willing to work mm. with and work on a project. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. Secondly, they need to get a coach who's a teacher, who is mm. going to improve players, mm. who's going to entertain. KCC fans want to watch entertaining football. Yeah. So when you look around locally, I mean, um, John Reed has showed that he can coach good football. Mm. What he has done at what he saw. Okay. KCC might be a bit top. But you give him a chance to take it down. Abdallah Mubidu is available. Mike Mutabi is, I think, those three can work on projects and can improve players. It's quite important. KCC are not a team that have gotten themselves used to bring foreign best coaches, or rather foreign coaches. But if locally you have felt a right fit for you, then you go uh, foreign. But if you go foreign, you must get it right. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe as we wind up, we want to just get to know which clubs you guys support. Because ah. we know you're members of the fourth estate, but uh, we'll start with Emazi here. I support KCC. Support KCCFC. <laughs> Tuka. I don't know what that is supposed to mean. <laughs> <laughs> Before becoming a journalist, I was a football fan. Okay. So I, I definitely watch. I grew up 
uh, in a family, okay, I can't say the word. Mm. As we were in this up. Mm. Yeah. Huge wow. <laughs> now we know which club he supports. But thank you very much, gentlemen. Brilliant minds, I will tell you. And these are the members of the fourth estate. This special episode was basically about the journalists and giving us the opinions about KCCFC's 2022 2023 season. There have been a lot of revelations and a lot of you know positives for the club. We had players that you know uh, moved on to for loan stints out, out there, players in, in Juma Ibrahim, uh, that is at CD Leganese in Spain, a player in Alan Inyo, still at CD Leganese, and actually got sold uh, to that club later on. A player in um, Elvis Edimwanje, who has been on loan in Dubai, that is a club called Falcons, Elite Falcons, and many, many other players. Uh, so all is not lost. Uh, well, it might be four seasons for KCFC not winning uh, silverware, but I will only tell you that it's just divine delayed. My name is Magoro Moses Mwaji, and I've been your host. Let's meet next week on Sunday, probably same time. Who knows, probably even same place. Have a good night.